Okay, all right. So if you've read the rep abstract on the program, I've changed it a little bit, kind of refocused uh, to do more of just a close reading of the, the ordinance that I'm talking about. And yeah, that'll be apparent when, once I get further into this. So in this paper, I will analyze the Ordenanza para la Prevención y Control de Ruidos y Vibraciones, or uh, Ordinance for the Prevention and Control of Noise and Vibrations, enacted by the city of Malaga in 2009. Although offset geographically from the historic cradle of flamenco in the Sevilla Jerez Cadiz Triangle, Malaga has been a flamenco site almost since the birth of the form. In addition to producing some of the biggest names in flamenco of the moment, Malaga also shares the honor of having Cante and Palos named after it, the Tangos de Malaga and the Malagueña. In his seminal text, Flamencología, flamencologist Anselmo Clement describes the Malagueña as a Cante de Orbita, or Song of Orbit in reference to its luminality in the flamenco brand. One could call the Malagueña stereotypically Spanish and generically Andalusian. As a place, Malaga also fills a certain tourist expectation of stereotypical Spanish vacation of sun and sand. Due to its location in Andalusia and, per UNESCO, the correct placement of flamenco, as well as its enshrinement in the flamenco vocabulary, Malaga could be considered a flamenco site. However, the municipal ordinance to regulate noise and vibration basically prohibited the opening of new tablaos, or flamenco dinner theaters. So I'm going to talk a lot about those in a little bit. In this case, does Malaga really want to be a flamenco site? What gives a city its distinct personality, its public face, its global image? Who decides what symbolizes a neighborhood, a city, a region, or a country? From the days of the Franquista, Spain is different campaign, tourism and advertising have portrayed images of both Spain and flamenco to the world that infect global popular culture and still draw many tourists to the country. That campaign lasting through the 1950s and 60s emphasized flamenco imagery as emblematic of the exoticness of Spain and coincided with a proliferation of establishments catering to international tourists. If these international tourists do seek out flamenco, if they even know the word. The primary venues where they tend to encounter the form are these tablaos, the flamenco dinner theaters. Tablaos can range from more tourist-centric fare to places that serve as genuine gathering points for locals and flamenco professionals. As with any live music venue, a certain amount of sound tends to be generated by tablaos. Singing, zapateado, palmas and jaleos, the shouts of encouragement to the performers, whether these sounds sh could be classified as music or as noise, I suppose, depends on how the person making the judgment feels about flamenco, or perhaps whether the performer is in compas or not. <laughs> Last year, the website aireflamenco.com published an article with the provocative title, Malaga prohibe, uh, prohibe abrir tablaos flamencos, or Malaga prohibits opening flamenco tablaos. The re regulation at issue here is the 2009 ordinance from the Ayuntamiento Ayuntamiento de Malaga, basically the city council, for, quote, the protection of the medio ambiente urbano, or urban environment, that involve annoyances, risks, or damage to persons or goods. The ordinance also asserts that the intention is to, is to preserve, protect, and improve the acoustic environment of the city of Malaga, the health of persons and their right to intimacy and to achieve an elevated level of protection against noise and vibrations. The language of the ordinance in general frames the problem in terms of contamination and the environment, presenting the issue of noise in the city as a problem of pollution, and citing a 2007 law passed by the Junta de Andalusia concerning environmental protections. Flamenco and tablaos are not mentioned specifically, but implied in mention, mentions of noise zones, nightlife, and bars. A brief note on city planning in Spain. There are a few, well, there's several different levels of bureaucracy that work together or sometimes against each other to plan and control Spanish urban environments. Although not as strong as under the dictatorship, the, sp the state government still sets certain standards which it is up to, then up to the regional, municipal, and local bodies of government to apply and enforce. Here, the local government in Malaga chose to apply a law aimed at environmental protection in a more ecological sense to the urban acoustic ecology. In this sense, the ordinance could be framed as a defense of the local residents against invasive and exploitative businesses and tourists. However, 
Again, not all tablaos cater solely to tourists, and live music venues can support local musicians and music scenes as well. This begs the question, just who are the persons being protected here? The words health and well-being appear throughout the ordinance and the 67-page guide to the 37-page ordinance, published by the Deputation of Malaga, yet another branch of the local bureaucracy, which details the justifications for the ordinance. The guide, published in 2010, describes, quote, known psychological and social effects, unquote, of prolonged exposure to noise, including stress, irritability, lack of concentration, problems with communication, and disturbed sleep. The guide offers a few statistics to back up these claims, but frequently omits citations for its claims. It lists several classifications of noise from those produced by everyday city operations, like car sounds, sirens, trains, subways, and airplanes, with two categories added at the end, which could include many flamenco outlets, not just tablaos. The first uh, it cites uh, la música elevada en barres, discotecas y viviendas, que puede llegar a afectar la convivencia entre el vecindario, elevated music in bars, discotheques, and households, which could affect the neighborhood, and actividades lúdicas, or ludic activities, and recreational activities concentrated in streets and urban plazas by the growing proliferation of botellodromos. So botellodromos are basically officially sanctioned drinking parties. So the street drinking party, or botellón, is mentioned throughout the guide quite a bit. Positioned as an activity of jóvenes or young people and kind of framed as illegal and antisocial. The guide contends that, quote, the botellón cannot be considered a right, not even a right to leisure, but only as a tolerated social activity. In all of these cases of noisy nightlife, bars, discos, house households, and botellons, bands and musicians are cited as primary offenders. The inclusion of the household as a potential site for illegal musical activity is particularly interesting. The language of both the ordinance and especially the guide includes families and children as classes of people that merit special protection from noise. It defines noise as, quote, characterized by being irregular, arrhythmic, and chaotic, unquote. The guide associates noise with economic and social problems like loss of productivity, accidents at work, and lowered property value. There you go, this is a nice little chart that they include there. It's, yeah, I like the, it's the emphasis on productivity there. Some of the potential psychological effects cited include depression, anxiety, social isolation, hysteria, neuroses, and my personal favorite, loss of desire or sexual inhibition. <laughs> <laughs> Related to that last point, the guide spe specifies that prolonged exposure to noise, while having no de demonstrable effect on pregnant mothers who have lived in noisy areas for their entire pregnancy, can adversely affect the children of mothers who move to noisy areas after the fifth month of pregnancy. So one of those things that it throws out there without really having, like, stating what, where they're getting that from. Here, in an odd echo of Franquista obsession with the family and domesticity, the persons being protected are not the jóvenes of the botellón or the performers at bars or clubs, but potentially productive future Spanish citizens. The guide even cites a piece of le legislation from the Franco years as a precedent for the current ordinance. So this leads me to some more questions. Where does flamenco fall here? Is it an antisocial, ludic pursuit? Or is it still a cultural heritage of humanity, albeit a fairly noisy one? Does prenatal exposure to zapateado and music adversely affect the future Spanish citizenry? Neither the guide nor the ordinance make any claims about flamenco or even folk culture in Malaga. The music referred to here could be rock, it could be jazz, or it could be techno. The style of noise is not as important as the location. And at heart, I argue that this ordinance, like others, of the same style in many cities around the world is not about noise, but about place and about the control and ownership of urban territory. Noise ordinances and alcohol regulations are the two key weapons in the gentrification armory. Is there a location that your company would like to build a hotel? Is there already a bar there? Alcohol regulation. Is there a live music venue there? Noise ordinance. In many cases, these ordinances do not necessarily protect private citizens or residents of an area. Remember, households can be targeted by this ordinance. 
property value and business interests often take precedent over community. However, one thing that many redevelopment plans fail to take into account is that hotels do not solely attract business or tourists to a city, but the cultural environment, even if it is noisy, is a big draw. So the majority of protests, including uh, an online petition to the mayor of Balaga, make this argument that prohibiting the opening of new tablaos will destroy tourism in the area, as if Flamengo only has value as a tourist commodity. The online petition demands modifications to the ordinance to make special allowances for Flamengo as an essential element of Malaga's Andalusian identity. Uh, however, does Malaga really need Flamengo or even an Andalusian identity to attract tourists or retain a cultural heritage? It is not part of the aforementioned Flamenco Triangle, the Sevilla, Jerez, Cadiz, which is, again, I always say it's more of like a diagonal line than a triangle, but whatever. In Flamencología, Clement likened Malaga and the Malagueña to uh, Granada and the Granaina in its flamenco liminality. And he also has a whole section on uh, Wasa that he talks about Malaga a lot, and that's why I put uh, Lupi up there. But uh, so as a coastal city, Malaga could rely more on the, what I call the sun and sand tourists who frequent beaches and resorts uh, than the, what the, this is Sasha Pack referred to them as uh, the tourists of uh, Pandereta or the folk culture tourism looking for local culture. So one of the potential disastrous outcomes of excessive noise proffered by the guide to the ordinance refers to as uh, ciudades inhospitas or in hospital cities. Does noise make a city inhospitable? What about poverty and crime? At no point in either the ordinance or the guide do the authors refer to crime or criminal activity other than those infernal botellones. Living in a large city can create a certain selective deafness to noise. So this is something that struck me after reading it, is there's a lot of, there's one specific problem with noise pollution that they do not mention anywhere. After a while, you might not notice the sound of traffic or the train quite so much or the drunken laughter or improvised concerts or more perniciously, the sounds of people being robbed or assaulted, the soundscape of the urban sub-economy, the sounds of poverty and inequality, of exploitation, of danger. Uh, if anyone knows about the Kitty Genovese case from New York City in the 60s, that is kind of what I'm thinking of here. If this ordinance really wanted to confront the problems of the urban environments, personal safety could have been addressed in this manner. Instead, it targets music and parties, signs of life. The empty street at night is framed as a positive rather than as a peril. Cities are essentially gatherings of people, and there is safety in numbers. Even the botellones, rowdy as they may be, can potentially be safer, a safer place to be than an empty street. So I just wanted to point out here, this is the map that they include. These are the loudest areas in Malaga. And then I just liked how it kind of coincided with the tourist areas cited in this little tourist map I found. So that's essentially what my reading of the ordinance was, is that it's not, although flamenco is not called out, it's not specifically protected either. And I think that's the issue here. And basically, what does uh, Malaga want it self to be seen as. And one of the articles that they include as ex an example of uh, how Malaga is perceived had the headline that uh, Malaga has the loudest neighbors in all of Andalusia, which was like, okay, well, how is that a bad thing? I don't know. So that's, that's, essentially, that's essentially it. All right. weren't complaining about, I don't know why the city is so obsessed with those botellones, but they weren't complaining so much about that. They were complaining about traffic sounds, about like the subway, about airplanes, you know, stuff that kind of bugs you about an area. So that, although they mention that in the ordinance and in the guide, they don't really focus on that. It, it gets to be this more of like indicting of a whole like lifestyle in a weird way.